What does it even mean to be cozy, you know? What even, what's cozy about anything? <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, my name is Peyton. It is nice to meet you, it is nice to see you, and welcome to the corner. Here on my channel, I cover all things cozy games, but I play cozy games in a chaotic way. I spend a lot of time thinking about what is really considered a cozy game. Especially recently with the release of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, a lot of you guys have been asking me if I was going to play the game, and at first I thought, well, Pokemon's not cozy. Or is it? So in today's video, I'm going to be going over if I think Pokemon Scarlet and Violet is good for cozy gamers. But before we get into it, please be sure to click the lovely little like button as well as subscribe for more cozy, chaotic content like this. Okay, I'll shut up and let's get into it. Let me first preface by saying I am actually not the cozy game gatekeeper. So the great thing about the world is we're all allowed to have different opinions. And if you disagree with me, that's totally fine and totally valid. You can define cozy games as so many different things, but here is how I define them. Cozy games are pretty much a game that gives you a sense of relaxation and joy when you're playing them. That's not to say there isn't a little bit of chaos or madness in it, but overall it is a more relaxing, casual gaming experience rather than something super high stakes and intense. Many notable cozy games include adorable characters, customization, beautiful landscapes to traverse, and sometimes many of them include farming. Going into my playthrough of Pokemon Violet, I did not know what the heck I was coming into. Truthfully, the only experience I'd had with Pokemon was watching the TV show and the movies when I was growing up as a kid, but this was my very first Pokemon game. So if you are looking for a very in-depth review of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet from someone who knows everything there is to know about Pokemon, this is not that video. But if you have no idea what's going on and you just want to see if maybe this is cute enough to play, this is the video for you. Let me first just tell you guys a little bit about what Pokemon Scarlet and Violet is in case you have no idea what the heck I'm talking about. Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, while two separate games, they are pretty much the same game. They just kind of have cosmetic differences and different Pokemon. Overall, they're pretty much the same structured game. You are a young individual who is going to school to learn how to be an amazing Pokemon trainer. In case you don't know, Pokemon are pretty much little monsters that range from looking like normal animals to looking like, what the heck is that? And each Pokemon comes with its own kind of like powers and moves. Each Pokemon also has a different type that it is, some being a water type, a fire type, electric type, fairy type, the list goes on. There are a lot of Pokemon, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of them, and it is your job to famously catch them all. In the world of Pokemon, there are also specialty Pokemon called legendary Pokemon that are harder to find, and in Scarlet and Violet, you start out with a legendary Pokemon as your source of uh, transportation, as well as there are also special Pokemon called shiny Pokemon, which are Pokemon but shiny. Except not really in this game, sometimes they're just a different fun color. Pokemon Scarlet and Violet is the first true open world Pokemon game, meaning you still have a storyline you can go ahead and follow, However, overall, it makes a relaxing gameplay because there is a very large world to explore and you can kind of play at your own pace. So now you know a little bit about Pokemon as a whole, let's go over if I think this is really a good game for cozy gamers. Especially being that this is not a cheap game. It is $59.99 when you see a lot of other cozy games be indie games that are a little bit cheaper of a price tag. So here's what I think is cozy about Pokemon. Of course, the open world aspect of it. This was the thing that drew me into it. What's so great about these Pokemon games is you can do whatever the heck you want. However, it's not boring. There's not like nothing to do. In fact, sometimes it feels like there's almost too much to do. There are a couple different main storyline quests you can follow. Just like all of the traditional Pokemon games, you can battle different gym leaders, therefore meeting new characters, training your Pokemon, and just being the champion trainer and, and beating all the gyms and being the cool person. There is also an aspect where you can follow this Titan storyline where you're battling these specific Pokemon to get certain abilities that you didn't have before, as well as there is just the aspect of trying to find every single Pokemon ever. What I think is cozy about it is the game doesn't make you do so many things. There is about a three hour tutorial you need to get through in the beginning, 
But after you get through that, you really can kind of choose your own adventure on what's most important and most exciting for your gameplay. Another thing I think is really cozy about Pokemon are the actual Pokemon. There are hundreds, hundreds of Pokemon, and each Pokemon can also evolve into different Pokemon. It is really exciting because no matter what your preference is, you will find a Pokemon that you like. Whether you're like me and you favor ones that look like sloths, or you like something a little bit more edgier and maybe scary looking. Regardless, there is definitely a Pokemon for you, and so I find that finding the Pokemon is something that feels inherently cozy to me. I think that there's something very cozy and relaxing about collecting things, and so in this very large world where there are a lot of Pokemon to collect, it feels really rewarding and wholesome when you do acquire a new Pokemon. Also, when you really love a Pokemon and you are using it a lot in battles and you level it up and then it eventually evolves into something else, it feels like a really big moment and it feels like you've made a connection with this character, even though it's just a cute little monster. Something else that I think makes Pokemon good for cozy gamers is there is combat, of course, you are battling Pokemon. However, it's not very graphic. Like, we're not seeing, you know, blood and gore from our cute little monster babies. If anything, we're seeing you know, little lightning bolts or, or like thunder, or we're seeing little kind of attacks. It's not creating an unpleasant viewing experience for people who don't like a lot of gore or action. It does still feel very wholesome, even though it is a battle and it doesn't feel overly complicated. So if fighting games are not your thing, you can absolutely, I promise, if I could do it, you could do it. You can absolutely figure out the fighting style for Pokemon. And what's so cool about the fighting with Pokemon is each Pokemon has its own specific moves, so it is another way to get to know your prized Pokemon babies that I think make the game so cute. Another thing that I think is great about this Pokemon game for cozy gamers is the idea that it can be played both solo and also with friends. I feel like many cozy games are solo. We definitely have some really great co-op games, but I would say that more often than not when I play a cozy game, it seems that it is a solo player game. And what's so great about Pokemon, specifically these ones, Scarlet and Violet, you can play with friends and you can go to each other's realms to kind of find other Pokemon and also do these raid battles that take on these crystallized, really gorgeous looking versions of Pokemon. I think this is also really great for not just cozy gamers, but gamers on a whole because you don't need to buy both games. Like I said before, both games follow the same premise. The only real difference is the cosmetic differences of Scarlet being set more in the past and Violet being set more in the future, as well as there are some different Pokemon in each game. But being that you can play online with your friends, you can go to each other's and get the Pokemon you're missing, and you can still complete the goal of getting all of the Pokemon in the game. I really like this aspect, especially being that the game is $59.99. It makes it feel like you don't need to purchase both games, unless perhaps you are a collector or a diehard Pokemon fan. So those are the reasons I think that cozy gamers will enjoy Pokemon. Let's get into some reasons I think cozy gamers might not like Pokemon. I think the biggest thing to note is there's no customization in these games. The only thing you can customize really is what your character looks like, but even that is very slim. I think one of the most exciting things about the most popular cozy games is the level of customization that you get. So whether you're playing an Animal Crossing New Horizons and you're decorating an entire island, or even something like a Stardew Valley, you're decorating your farm, I think that many cozy gamers like the idea of personalization and customization, and Pokemon just isn't that game. It's more of a collection and storyline based game. Obviously everyone is different and there's no like, right or wrong way to be a cozy gamer or what games are the best cozy games compared to others, but I'm just saying I find that most games that are deemed cozy have some kind of customization, so if you like customization in your games, just note there isn't really any in this one. The next thing was something that I really struggled with in my playthrough because it took me out of a relaxing kind of atmosphere, and that was the fact that every time you run into a Pokemon, it automatically engages you in a battle which would be fine if the Pokemon weren't everywhere and also really, really small. Which was kind of annoying because when I think open world, I think about like getting to choose what I want to happen and where I want to go. And when I'm running into a Lechonk every five seconds, being forced to open the battle screen and either choosing, okay, I guess we'll do this battle or always fleeing from it, I found it took me out of the relaxing nature of the game and I wish that it just, I wish there was a menu option that came up like every time you ran into a Pokemon, like do you want to battle XYZ Pokemon and then you say yes. Something else to note, not necessarily just for cozy gamers, 
but if you're someone like me who's never played a Pokemon game, there are these shiny Pokemon that are basically these super cool, rare versions of each Pokemon, and they're a big deal if you find one. The problem is, they're not so clear if you don't know what Pokemon look like. For example, I got a shiny Pokemon, and I got like a shiny sheep Pokemon called Mareep, and it wasn't sparkly or shiny at all, it was just pink. And the normal one is white. So, unless I had my chat telling me, oh my god, this is, this is this pig, and like, this is something. You might not know. Um, it doesn't necessarily matter, I guess. There's no, like, you don't need to find the shinies. But if you favor trying to get the rarest collectible things in a game, just know they are hard to spot in this one. I find that more exciting, but if you're really looking for a relaxing game where you don't need to, like, stare down every Pokemon, that might take you out of it a little bit. Overall, there's not really a way for me to say if Pokemon Scarlet and Violet is a cozy game. It's up to you to decide what your definitions of cozy games are. However, based off of everything that I told you, in my personal opinion, I would consider this game cozy, and I would consider it user-friendly for someone who's never played a Pokemon game before. But I will say, if you've never played a Pokemon game before, and you're on the fence about if this type of game seems like something you would like, I would definitely recommend checking out a game called Ooblets first. Ooblets has a lot of the factors that Pokemon has, in that you are collecting these strange little monsters, there are different types, and there are sparkly ones. In Ooblets they're called Gleamies, you know, in Pokemon they're Shinies. So you're looking to collect these different monsters, However, in Ooblets, there are definitely less Ooblets to collect, so it's not as, like, large and vast. Like, if you're if you're overwhelmed by collecting all of the hundreds and hundreds of Pokémon, Ooblets is better because there's a smaller amount of Ooblets. As well as Ooblets does have a more cutesy animation style, as well as if you like customization, it is not a very customization-heavy game, but you can customize things more than you can in Pokemon. There's also farming in that one. I've made tons of videos on Ooblets, so I definitely recommend checking that out. Why I'm recommending Ooblets before you go ahead and jump to Pokemon first is Ooblets is half the price. So if you've never played one of these types of games before and you really do favor a more cutesy, I guess more stereotypical cozy style, I would try Ooblets first. And then if you like the ideas of Ooblets and you want it to get a little more challenging, because frankly, I think Pokemon is more challenging, then I think jumping to Pokemon would be a good idea. I think personally, I wouldn't have thought that I would like Pokemon unless I had played Ooblets first, because it was my first time ever playing a game like that. Because Ooblets also has battles in a way, they're dance battles, so they're not like fighting battles, but it does hold the same kind of mechanic that Pokemon has, where each Ooblet has its own set dance moves, and using certain moves will help you and hurt you, and it kind of teaches you the basics of Pokemon battling. Regardless, I think both of these games are cozy games, and I think they're definitely suited for cozy gamers. And if you're still on the fence about Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, I definitely recommend checking out the live stream I did playing Pokemon Violet. I think what was good about my playthrough was you were getting something from someone who hasn't played any other Pokemon game before, so I wasn't comparing it to any other Pokemon game, I was just kind of looking at it for what it was. But I want to know what you guys think, so let me know down below, do you think Pokemon Scarlet and Violet should be considered a cozy game, or do you think it'll be something that people who tend to favor cozy games will like? Thank you all so, so much for watching today's video. If you haven't already, please consider clicking the lovely little like button and subscribe for more cozy, chaotic content like this. I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye!